we, uh, we forgot to do this. Let's do this really quickly. We'll get it out of the way and then on with the show. It's uh, lucky number time. We turn on the machine, mix up the numbers. Our first number tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is seven. Our second number tonight is six. Our first number tonight is seven. Our Two numbers. Our third number tonight is three. Tonight's lucky number, ladies and gentlemen, Your prize should be arriving by UPS, so look for the big brown truck. <laughs> my, my first guest tonight is a very talented and delightful woman. We're always happy to have her on the show. Uh, she is uh, about to have two films released. One is Miracles with Tom Conti and Martin Scorsese's After Hours. Please welcome back to this program, Terry Garr. Yeah! You look terrific. Thank you very much for being here. You know, we missed you. It's been a while, and uh, we're always very happy to have you on the show, and, and uh, thanks again. Thank you. So? So why do you want me on here? I never have anything to say. No, no, you always have plenty to say. What have you been doing? What's new? I know you got two two movies coming up, uh, Tom Conti and uh, Martin Scorsese. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what, and what another one. What's the other one? Um, Island of the Bossy Women. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you no? made that up. Yeah, no, I did. No, that's not a movie. It's a sequel to, from Planet of the Bossy Women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. You know, when I did that that thing the other night, um, the night of a hundred egomaniacs, um, <laughs> Penny Youngman came up to me and he said, "Darling, you do these talk shows. You have nothing to say. You have no jokes. You got to think of some jokes." Because he didn't know that I don't do that. So, mm -hmm. so, so I thought of a joke, and that was it. Island of the Bossy Women. Oh, that was good. That was very nice. How, how was the big affair? Did you enjoy it? It was more than 100 stars. It was like 300 stars, wasn't it? Was a, it? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Was it fun? It was a pretty much of a nightmare, I thought. Yeah. yeah. From what standpoint? From every standpoint. Let's face it. I thought I would maybe be going there as, you know, as an observer. I'd be able to watch this and, and, and squeeze some humor out of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But it, it lost the, the yeah. humor. Did, did, you, uh, did you feel sort of like... A, a, kind of silly showing up at, a, an, at an event calling itself a night of a hundred stars and you, you sort of like the attitude is well i'm a star i should be here you know <laughs> that sort of thing yeah did that bother you a little bit no i didn't think of it that way you know i mean i thought of it maybe and i i actually see now i'm making a mistake talking about it now because now people will know i'm on it but i thought yeah, but from i what could I maybe slip through and you, they would never have known i was on it because there was a lot of people, and they all went through fast, and, and you, you wouldn't know that it was yeah. there. Well, no, go ahead and talk about it, because I think it's important to, to discuss it. <laughs> now that the world knows, I was, yeah, I was there. So if you see What did you do? What was your... Now, did, were you in a production number? Did you sing? Did you dance? I was in the fashion sec segment section. Yeah. I, I modeled a Halston dress. Mm -hmm. And all these, there was this big section with all these people that are... I don't know who these people are. They are well, they're stars. What do you mean you don't know? I know, that's the <clears> problem. <throat> they're, they're Dynasty and Dallas and all those kind of people. And we modeled clothes. Except, at the very end of this fashion thing, out comes Anne Margaret as the bride. Yeah. Now, if I had known I was going to be background to Anne Margaret, I wouldn't have done the number, you know? I, no, I wasn't asked if I would like to be the bride or even a bridesmaid. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was just asked, would you want to be the... No, I'm just kidding. But the truth is, <laughs> years ago, I danced behind Dan Margaret, you know, when I was in a Las Vegas. girl. Yeah. And I thought, now, wait a second. I'm doing this again? Right. Oh, well, it doesn't yeah. matter. It was for charity. Did you, uh, did you, would you do it again? Would you be in it again? N-O-P-E. Yeah. Means, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's a good experience to have once in a while. It is? Think? Well, I think so, sure. You know what I thought? I thought it was like high school. It was like there was the seniors and the juniors and the sophomores. There was the Laurence Olivier, Dustin Hoffman, um, De Niro crowd, and then there was the the achievers, Linus Pauling, Helen Caldicott, and uh, those kind of people, mm -hmm. Christian Barnard. And then there was the actors, and then there was the sluts. <laughs> <laughs> Just like in high school. Now, now who? You remember that? Now who would you uh, lump into that latter category? Who would? Well. 
A Who lot makes of the up gals that, group? that were in my dressing room, if we'd walked down 8th Avenue on Sunday, mm -hmm. well, yeah. I think it would have spoken for itself. Did, 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 you meet, did you meet stars that you had always wanted to meet? Well, a few people I did, like yeah. Like who? Who impressed you? Like Bob you? and Ray. I talked yeah. to them. And, now, uh, do they count as one or two stars? <laughs> you always ask that. The same thing about the McGuire sisters and, and the, all the yeah, Pointer I know. sisters. I know. It's a stupid They joke. count as one. Yeah, they do count as They do. One. <laughs> but oddly enough, Henny Youngman counts as two. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Now, were there any stars there who counted as a half? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there were. There were quite a few. In addition to Bob and Ray, now, who, who was a real thrill for you to meet? Well, yeah, I liked meeting all those people that were, you know, the doctors and uh, Dr. Helen Caldicott, and they, they have something to say. I mean, they're, they, and they're wonderful, too, because um, I sat near them in the rehearsal time or whatever that was, and we were all gathered there, and they observe it in a much different way than sure. the stars who they're, don't observe it at all. Yeah. You know, this, we all, I guess, we're in the Rockettes dressing room. Oh, I just feel so awful coming and dishing the whole thing. No, go. <laughs> well, Come on. So, we get there, and... Uh, Everyone arrives in like full kabuki makeup. This is like 11 o'clock in the morning. And I think, now, well, what, are we gonna tape this now? What's happening? And then they get in front of the mirror and they never leave the mirror, ever. Till two o'clock in the morning before we go on or whenever the hell, it, or heck, it finally went on. They were still in the mirror, I mean, forever. I, I wanted to look at them and say, now, doesn't there ever come a time when it's, you go, okay, that's it. That's as much as I can do. There never came that time. Yeah. It was never over. It was, it was always more to see, yeah. more to look at. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, we, have to, uh, we have to pause here for a, a commercial. Now, when we come back, you want to you talk to anybody on the phone? Yeah. Do you really? Sure. You don't have to. Oh, I better not. Okay. Uh, we'll be right back with Terry Garth. <laughs> Now, what do you want to do? We, we have questions here. We can talk about this. We can talk about anything you want, or we can go to the phones. We have people holding here. You don't have to talk to them. Mm -hmm. uh, they invested 50 cents to get through, so it's not like a big deal. It's not like they had to put their car up or anything. <laughs> so it's up to you. This is, this, we've never done it before, and it might no, go nowhere. So if you don't want to do it, we don't have to do okay, it. Okay, I'll do it. Everything. Sure, I'll do it, but I, I don't know, I'm not so very good on the phone. Well, ne neither am I, but, and, and neither are these folks either, as, as, we, <laughs> as we saw earlier. Okay. Uh, but, you know, you, I'll, just, I'll just put it on there and we'll see. But just take a question and, and we'll just see how it goes. Okay. It's an experiment. Wait a minute, is this the one where you say, what's the answer to the trivia question? You don't have to say that, it's okay. just kind of an icebreaker. <laughs> okay, because there is no trivia question, There is right? no trivia question. There also is no lucky number. Oh, yeah. now so, you tell yeah. me. And uh, they'll probably ask you, want to know about Larry Budd or something, and then we'll screen those calls and get rid of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. I'll just see who we have here. Hello? Thanks. Who is this? Dave Saunders. Hi, Dave. Uh, listen, uh, well, I want you to talk to Terry Garr and be very nice to her. Sure. All right. And find out where Dave's from. What, what's your name again? Dave. Dave Saunders. Yeah, hi. How you doing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, where are you from, Dave? Ken, Ohio. Where? Kent, Ohio. Oh, by Kent State? Yeah, where are you from? Well, I used to live in Ohio. Really? Yeah, Cleveland. What? Land of the Cleves. That's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's okay. Um, so what, what's your, do you have a question? No, no, I have, I have the answer. Oh, you have the answer? Yeah. This is what we're looking for. Uh, what is the answer? Dick Clark. I what did don't he say? Think he said Dick Clark. Oh, no, it's Clark Kent. <laughs> <laughs> it's Clark Kent. <laughs> Thank, right. thank okay. you. We're going to hold right now. Oh. All right. Now that was that was not too bad, was it? No. All right. Well, maybe maybe we'll do another one of those. In the room. That was very nice of you, and I understand you're not feeling too well. You have a little a, a little touch of a cold or something. Well, I perked up though. Well, that's good. Tell me about miracles with Tom Conti. What's that like? Well, I don't know. It was this movie we shot in Mexico. And that's all I remember. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Now, how long were you shooting the film? Oh, three months in Mexico. 90 days, and you don't remember anything about the film. I, I remember a very lots of trouble. A very uh, That doesn't make sense, does it? I remember a great deal of problems, and that doesn't make sense either. 
the people didn't speak English. <laughs> you see, the Mexicans, kind of, the, the Mexicans, Mexicans of course, spoke Spanish. That's right. So there was a lot of trouble in that area. Kept, everything from ordering food to ordering special effects to getting things, you know, times and schedules and, and that kind of thing mm -hmm. was a mess. Yeah. Uh, you speak no Spanish at all? No hablo. No. <laughs> well, now, what's the movie about? You can tell us that. I can't tell you that, and not because I don't want to, it's because I don't know what it's about. And it was, was the movie in Spanish as well? You know, that might be it. That might be it. Maybe reason. not even be released in this country, perhaps. No, it will be. Yeah. It, it, it's about, we get kidnapped, and we get taken to uh, Mexico, and we have to land a plane, and, and we have to r run across the desert, and it's those kind of things, you know? Yeah. An, an action-adventure action film. An action-adventure yeah. film. Very yeah. funny stuff. And then you got this after hours, and then what's next for Terry Gar? <laughs> I don't know. Then we're going into that famous gray area. What does that mean? You're taking well, some time off? Well, there's a, no, yeah, I'm taking some time off. Yeah. I'm sifting through scripts, um, between engagements. Yeah. I'm looking for work. No, you don't need work. You're, you're a highly sought-after uh, actress. Really? Now, do me a favor, come back and see us, because the last what time... What does this mean? Well, you, nothing, we're just... Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, come back and see us. Don't wait so long to, to come back and see us. Very nice of you. Because we all we all missed you. You did. We, we like me, having Dave. you on the show, and we'd Dave, like to see more of you. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you too. I hate to interrupt because you're getting along so well and everything. But I was just thinking, Dave, about that scene from the movie Silkwood. Is this a? I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, but you know the scene where Meryl Streep gets dragged along by a runaway horse. Yeah. You know that. You remember that. You remember. You know, sorry. Dave, that she did sorry, that man. scene all by herself. Yeah, I know, Paul. You, you know, know you know that uh, Terry Gar was not in Silkwood. Yeah, I don't know. I, n I don't know why I thought of Silkwood. Yeah. Just, uh, she looks so great and everything, and I just thought of, you know, not that she reminds me of Meryl Streep, I just started thinking. So Meryl well, Streep did that, you know. I'm sorry. Did he that whole scene him. by herself. Did you he, know? Uh, he brings up an interesting point, but I think everybody, everybody knows that uh, the, the, the horse-dragging scene in, uh, not only in Silkwood, but in uh, Kramer versus Kramer. And the horse, the horse-dragging scenes in Falling in Love Meryl Streep did those herself. Yeah, with no stunt man or stand-ins. No, no, she did them herself. It's really not that difficult. It and seems it... to me to be very, very, very dangerous. No, it's do. not dangerous. I'm telling you, it's, it's probably, Terry will back me up on this, the first thing you learn when you go to Hollywood, right? It's the really? very first thing. In fact, I, I tell you what, I can show you how simple this stunt is. You could show I us? could do this stunt for you. In fact, I'll do it right after station identification. Really? Yeah, we'll do it. All right. Thanks, Terry. No, don't leave. program. We're running a little bit late tonight. I was going to appraise you of the wonderful free gifts people are sending in offers for us when we get to L.A., but we don't have time to run those down tonight. We'll do it another night. Sorry. Um, let, me, let me just remind you, here are three guests we will have on next week from L.A. Paul, listen to this. Bo Derek will be here. Yes. Uh, Stevie Wonder. Yeah. Really? And Johnny Carson. Plus, uh, all kinds of wonderful, exciting things from uh, the Golden State. That's what they call California, you know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, what's the matter, Paul? <laughs> no, I just, I see uh, Miss Gar backstage. And you're laughing at her? Well, no, she's doing something. That, what is she doing? Well, she just commented on the, so on let's the just line. Let's go see what the, hell she is. <laughs> what, the, what the hell are you doing? Do it again. Do, I want to see it. Do it again. That's what I did. What? Well, I didn't she see said, it. Uh, line up, you know, we got Bo Derek, Bo Derek. Stevie Wonder. Johnny Carson. Oh, this is what you were doing? Like, yeah. no big deal? Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Well, come to think of it, maybe we have plenty of time to run down those gift items that have been coming in. Let's see here. Just see what this list is getting to look like. It's always a pleasure to welcome my first guest to this program. She can soon be, soon be seen in two major motion pictures. <laughs> Uh, she can soon, soon be seen in two major motion pictures, Miracles, co-starring Tom Conti and Martin Scorsese's After Hours. Please welcome the lovely and talented Terry Garr. Nice to see you again. 
thank you so much for coming. You know, I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, I really have enjoyed you from the very first film I ever saw you in. I thought you're a terrific actress, and I love having you on the show, and I, and I love anything you're in. And, and again, my thanks for having the time out of your busy schedule to come and be with us tonight. Why are you being so nice to me? Is something always, terrible going to happen? No, nothing terrible, but I'm, I'm always nice to you. And I just wanted to, by way of saying this, wanted to reassure you and relax you, because I know you're a little frazzled. You, you got in a little late, and... Uh, uh, so don't be upset on my account. Oh, I'm not upset. I thought maybe you were upset. I thought you were mad at me or something. No, no, why would I be mad at you? Well, because, ladies and gentlemen, um, I didn't get here in time today to do the notes. You know, they do these notes beforehand. So this is actually... A little pre-discussion. A little pre yeah. A little premeditated, you know, things to set up. But um, I wasn't able to do that today. So I thought yeah. maybe you'd be angry with no, me. No, no, I'm certainly not angry, and, and I hope that everything's all right in your life and that there's nothing of an emergency nature taking place. Nothing of an emergency. I just uh, had a lot of things to do today, and I thought it would be better for me to exercise and run and meditate and do yoga than it would be to talk about something, you know, that it would be better off just being spontaneous. Uh -huh. So I know it's probably a new experience for you, too, to be like a free fall and see if the parachute opens. <laughs> So you thought all of those things, running, meditating, shopping, yeah. seemed to be more important, actually, than spending a few minutes on the phone to get some information for the notes for the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, now, what do you do when you come to New York? Uh, now, <laughs> do, you have, do you have an apartment here? Are you buying, uh, thinking of I buying it? I asked you not to say anything about this. So what, happened, what happened to the parachute and free fall and all that, <laughs> all that crap? <laughs> Um, okay, forget it. Tell me about your house in uh, California. <sighs> we can't talk about that either? Oh, yes. Okay, fine. People are supposed to believe you don't have a dwelling? <laughs> <laughs> I, I bought a house in California, yes, that I have uh, very big regrets about. But Bu that's only natural. Buyer's remorse. Sure. Has anyone ever been hospitalized for buyer's remorse <laughs> or, or died from it? Because I really hate this house. I can't imagine what I was thinking. Uh, what, what about it don't you like? Everything. Is, is it a big home? No. It's a small little house that you can barely, has no halls, no closets, no view, no, nothing. I don't understand. Is it in a good, is it in a good location? Well. Because they say, you know, that location is everything. It must be in a great location. Mm -hmm. Where, where is it? It's on the Sunset Strip. Well, that's a great location. Oh, yeah. Up in the hills? Uh, yeah. Is that the old Ludwig estate? <laughs> It is. It's the old Charles Ludwig. Charles Ludwig. You know, they say it's haunted. Uh, no notes. Can you believe we're talking like this? And no notes. So, now, uh, but when you saw the house, <clears throat> the first time you saw it, what really struck you? What caught your fancy about the house? I don't know, the light or the, I don't know, some, the way it was decorated. So when this guy moved out and took all his furniture, then I saw that it was really... That was what kind I like. Kind of a dump. Yeah. But, but you'll be able to go in there and turn it, turn it into something magic, don't you think? No, I'm going to move. <laughs> Did you get a good deal on it? No, not necessarily. I guess, I don't know. I don't know if we should talk about this anymore. Well, uh, is this is why we do pr notes, because something like this could happen. But see, I, th I, think, I think the best thing for you to do is just move right in, and within a week or two, you'll feel right at home. That seems to be what happens to most Americans. It does? You're a very logical guy. That's Thank what you, you would do, right? Well, no. What would you do? I'd pay a guy to burn it. <laughs> uh, well, uh, so that's your attitude. thank you so much. I'll tell you what, we have plenty of time to get to all of these other great stories on these notes here. And uh, we'll be right back with uh, Terry Gar after this, folks. <laughs> Terry Gar is here tonight. 
And uh, a guy named Jim Buck will be here. Jim makes his living walking dogs in the city of New York. Do you have a dog? No. Have you ever, ever owned a dog? Yes. Dogs are great, mm -hmm. aren't they? Yeah. I like dogs. Uh, I like dogs in cars, don't you? Dogs in and cars? The dogs in cars, yeah. but riding in cars. Yeah, they're, they're cute like that way. Yeah. Yes, they are. Uh, now, do you want, can we talk about your mom a little bit? I know you and your mom attended an wow. event. Yeah, that's why I was late and crazy today, because she was getting to the airport and the bus and the thing and all that stuff. But yeah, she came here to do the uh, Rockette alumni dinner dance, mm -hmm. the big bash. As she your called. mom was, in fact, a Rockette? Yes, she was a Rockette. Was she one of the originals? Is that correct? I think she was one of the originals, although, you know, she lies, so I don't know. She, <laughs> one time she'll say she is, and the next time she well, wasn't really one of the first ones. I mean, she's amazing. She's 76 years old. All her pals are out. They're all there. Rockettes and their kids and now does your mom still have great legs? Well, I don't know. She has pretty good legs. Yeah, yeah. I would think so. She's real strong and it's a good a good way to start out life doing five shows a day kicking yeah. your legs like that. Yeah. I guess. And uh, was this fun for you attending this uh, get together? What what do some of the rockets look like these days? <laughs> they look like they did before. I can't be rude. I mean, no they kidding. look like anybody else. You know, the good thing about it is from all walks of life, get to be, um Oh, yeah, they all come from Florida and Cleveland and stuff like that. But, um, and then they come to New York and they get to be in show business and, you know, be in a show with an audience. Yeah. And then they don't have to pay the ugly price of, of, you know, going on to do David Letterman and stuff like that. Oh, well, thank you, thank you so much. That's not what I meant. What I mean is a lot of times actresses, the you go out price. there and you have a good time and you're, you're doing, well, see, this is what I meant. And you, uh, you work real hard and then you start, you, if you get old, then it's a big crime. And, you know, people, oh, I, I heard Esther Williams talk about this. It's just not not fair. I did what I did when I did it, and now later people will go, oh, she's gained weight, she looks mm -hmm. old. It's not fair. So Rockettes have it very good because they got to have a good time and have yeah. fun, and now they all went out and they all have like six or eight kids. Because yeah. when they kicked their legs, they learned how to... Uh, no, that's not what I mean. We'll take that out. Don't worry. That's not what I meant, but you know... I'm sure what it sounded like, though. I meant... When they... It means that they became very physically capable of bearing many children. Right. Yeah, I think that's the meaning we got from that. No, you know something? Your audiences, you now, encourage no, a very a... kind of, a, you know, a sexist sort of... I, I've, I've had it up here. <laughs> So you're enjoying your stay, then. <laughs> now, now, let's talk, uh, Terry, about these movies, uh, Martin Scorsese, and uh, what was the other one? The other one is uh, oh, Tom Connie with Miracles, Miracles starring mm -hmm. Tom Connie. How, let's talk about Miracles. What's this about? Um, well, you, it's, it's too hard to explain. It's okay, that, but let's no, no, move wait. on to... I have to, because the last time I was on the show, I said the same thing. It's too... It, this, there's this couple. Yeah, you they don't get, want to discourage people from seeing no. it by making it sound obtuse. Right. Yeah. It, there's this couple, and they get divorced. Now, that night, they both decide to go out separately and celebrate, and they get into this car accident, mm -hmm. and they get out of the car, and they, it turns out that they're, they crashed into each other. Mm. That's the first miracle. It could also be called disastrous, mm -hmm. this movie. This is, this is a comedy, then. This is a comedy, yeah. we hope. And then um, they get kidnapped by this guy, and they get taken to Mexico, and they're flying this plane, and it runs out of gas, and the guys that are flying it jump out so they have to land it or they're gonna crash and it's one thing after another like that and then at the end they get back together because oh, they see that's that good. <laughs> I don't like your audience no 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 you shouldn't say that they'll follow you home Terry uh, you know on the way over here I saw the National Enquirer there was two headlines on it one of them was um, psychics head explodes <laughs> Well, you know, I, I saw Tom Brokaw in the hall, and he was talking about that. It's got the, the whole newsroom is up for grabs now. And yeah. the other one said, baby born pregnant. Could that be? Well, I don't know. But a psychic's head actually exploding. Of course, in that case, the guy would have had plenty warning you. Too much information? Like, oh, yeah. 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 He would have. Right. So he, he would have known, he would have, today's not a good day to get a haircut, because you'll kill innocent bystanders. Um... <laughs> And the Martin Scorsese film. Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm in that one. Yeah. Now, when is this one coming out? They're coming out simultaneously, aren't they? One's coming out in um, August, and one's coming out in uh, September. Yeah. And the Martin Scorsese movie is just all takes place in one night here in New York, in Soho. You play a, uh, I think you told me this before, you play a waitress, right? No, I play a brain surgeon. <laughs> Terry? I'm sorry, Dave. Yes, I play a waitress. <laughs>
Brain. See, no one would believe it if I put a brain surgeon with that. No, no, I'd believe it. You yeah, know what my next gonna... movie's going to be? Madame Curie. Very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Now, well, let me check with our stage manager and find out exactly how much time we got left. None. Thank you. Uh, but now, you know, I feel, I, I always feel when, when your little segment comes to a close that, that, <laughs> that maybe you would, you would like to stick around and help out with the rest of the show and kind of... Yeah. But you don't have to. I can't wait to leave. <laughs> Or maybe you don't have to. I can't All right, well, you think it over. You'll be the judge here. Seat. Woof, get me out of here. You be the judge. And, <laughs> and if you want to hang around, we have the dog walker coming. What else do we have, Kevin? Oh, Jeff Daniels. You probably oh, yes, work I like him. Very He's nice young man. Yep. He has his wife and his uh, mm -hmm. young child here. Mm -hmm. Very sweet fellow. So you think it over and let us know. Okay. All right. We'll uh, be right back here after station identification. <laughs> If you're tuning in tonight, you certainly tuned in on a, a good night. We have a fine program. Uh, Terry Garr is here, also uh, Jimmy Buffett, and uh, Tomas Alvarez, a man who uh, rolls cigars. Uh, let's let's bring. Uh, uh, it's true. He's been doing it for like uh, 50 years or or longer. How many years? 58 years. He's been rolling cigars. Yeah. Uh, and we we all set to go. Okay. Uh, it's always a pleasure to welcome my first guest to this program. Her latest film, Martin Scorsese's After Hours, opens later this week, and she can also soon be seen in another film called Miracles. Please welcome the hardest working woman in show business, Terry Garr. <laughs> You've handed me a little gift here, a little pamphlet. It says Mental Game, and this is a little uh, brochure, a little pamphlet. What is it? It's from... Uh, Japan. From Japan, yeah. What, what does this mean? What is the significance well, of this? you figure it out yourself, I think. It's something I saw in Japan that I thought you might like, and I thought now would be a good time to give what, to you. Do, you. do you know what it is? No. <laughs> no? She squeaked. Um, it, uh, a mean, book? No. You paid for this? No, no, it was free. A handout? Mm -hmm. On the street? <laughs> no, it was in a store or mm -hmm. something. Yeah, it's yeah. good, isn't it? Especially this one. Well, I have no idea what this is. Well, you just pick one that you like, and then... Well, they're, they're tests, aren't they? But, yes, But dealing they are. with what? Nobody knows? Yeah, nobody knows. Oh. That's the up your alley, isn't it? Well... <laughs> I noticed. <laughs> you know something, David? Thank you very much. You were just in Japan, weren't you? Yes, I was. What were you recently. doing there? Vacationing, weren't you? No, I was, uh, I was at the film festival. Film festival what? What film festival? The Japanese Film Festival, the International Oh, Film Festival it, like, of like Tokyo. there, I see. And uh, you were there uh, because you're, one of the films you're in was playing? No. Just... I don't know if you know this, but I work in films from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, well, I know, but I mean... Uh, and, Dave? Uh, yeah? Your hair looks good. No, I know. <laughs> so. You know, people... People are tuning in now saying, it's a rerun, look at his hair. It's, uh, I know, I have a lot of trouble no, with I my hair. No, I just wanted to say that, because I want to, you to relax. Thank you. <laughs> you look very nice, your hair looks good, as thank always. Thank you, thank you. All right, now, what were you doing in Japan? You're over there as an actress representing all North American actors? Yes, I was. Mm -hmm. I didn't ever think of it that way. Was but this I the first so. time you've been to the country of Japan? Yes, it was. How did you find it? I found it to be very crowded uh -huh. and very different. What city were you in? Tokyo. Yeah. Exciting place? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a very interesting place. I mean, I could go on about this place. It's in, it's different. Mm -hmm. Sort of mm, Japanese, I guess. Very Japanese. And very crowded and very, you know, regimented and stuff like that. It's different. Uh -huh. They care about things like um, uh, their own humility. I mean, they would never do the stuff that you do. <laughs> Well, I, I, uh, they're very gracious uh, uh, people, aren't they? A nice, uh, uh, caring... Yes, they, they have are. They a, a real sense of themselves and decorum and mm -hmm. so on and so mm -hmm. forth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they must have just thought you were uh, something terrific. I was a middle-class dream. That's what they... 
like over there. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't, why don't you explain that? I'm not sure. I don't understood. know what it means either. I just was thinking that Japan is very middle class. I mean, there's not a lot of lower class and upper class. Mm -hmm. It was just all middle class. Mm -hmm. Working for the good of advancing the cause of the country. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and how would you be a middle class dream? I don't know. I, that was supposed to be a joke, and it was like nothing. Was... <laughs> but I'll tell you something about Japan. The restaurants were very bad. I went into a restaurant, and I ordered uh, soup, and I took a bite of the soup, and my tongue fell off. And this guy came up Wait to me and gave me two pieces of rye bread and charged me extra. <laughs> <gasps> That's another joke. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not so easy, is it? No, it isn't. No. I really admire you. You yeah. are something. Mr. Big Shot. <laughs> uh, I'll never tell another joke. Let me hear another, another one. Let me hear no, another. No, I haven't got any more. Now I know that uh, I know where you got this joke. Really? Yeah, because I know that you've been working as a cabaret performer. That's right. Yeah, and you're singing and you're telling jokes to drunks, aren't you? <laughs> Not exactly. Yes, you are. Yes. You're singing. Yes. Yeah. Now, you where, tell me where the club is. What, what's... Well, I was singing up in Williamstown where I was doing these plays. Mm -hmm. But after the plays at night, I mean, after I'd done my serious psychological drama, I would go to nightclubs and sing and mm -hmm. stuff. Like... I would sing. <laughs> All right. And then you would also have a little patter. Nice to see you. you well, didn't... mostly I sang. You know, first I sang the song, She Sits Among the Cabbages and Peas. <laughs> <laughs> but... Now, this is another little joke, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Now, get the other one out of your system. Let's hear the other one. They changed the name of the song. Well, they didn't like it. They didn't it was like that too one. Much too much innuendo. Yeah, so, so they changed, changed it to... to. She sits among the cabbages and leeks. That's right. Now. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll do a commercial. Now, when we come back, you'll sing a little for us. Yeah, we'll be right back here with the Terry Gar. <laughs> Now, where were, you, where were you working on the plays? Tell me the plays, the, the Schnitzler plays, you said, right? Yes, in uh, Williamstown, Massachusetts. And the plays were, is this right, Miracles and After No, 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 those are my movies. Oh, those are the movies, No, yeah. I did um, Undiscovered Country and La Ronde. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. my favorite, I guess, of all the Schnitzler works. <laughs> really? I don't know, I never heard of the man. It's sort of a turn-of-the-century Viennese psychological sexual dramas mm -hmm. that we did. Yeah. They were very funny. Oh, these, witty. <laughs> Now, uh, so after the, the performance, and it, by the way, it must be good, really, to get back to your roots, the stage, and get in touch with the audience and, and really feel the energy of a live performance. Yeah, yeah. it must be. Yeah. You do that, don't you? No. Now, uh, so after the shows, you went to this club and you sang and you told jokes. Now, what did you sing? Did I, people... Uh, I told you. Did they advertise you? Yes. And uh, prices of the drinks went way up? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, you'd come on stage, and what would happen? <laughs> Are you sure this is going to be funny when I tell this? What? They would play the music, and I would sing. Oh, yeah, well, that was hilarious. <laughs> uh, no, no, but, oh, no, Terry, now, wait a minute. Settle I'm down. I'm not responsible no, anymore. No, no, you're fine. No. No, you're just fine. All I'm trying to get at is... <laughs> yes. Uh, why, Miss Collins, I've never seen you with your hair down before. Uh, sing something. Oh, I knew that's what you were getting at. You know, Connie Chung was on. Connie Chung was I on. I saw that. And she sang a medley from 42nd Street. No, she didn't. Yes, she you, did. It was quite good. You tried to make her sing something from uh, My Fair Lady. No, that's right. All but, I want to... No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> Why don't you sing? I don't sing, but you're but working as... But I don't as, either. What, you, then you were taking these people's money... Uh, uh, <laughs> you were taking their money under false pretenses. Come on, sing a little Ain't Misbehaving, Paul and... No! G, no. And G. No, thank you. Just a little bit. Come on. It's like no, a summer club. No, I won't.
here. All right. <laughs> now, let me explain something. It's the first something. time I've ever been on your show. No, no, well, let me then. explain something. See, none of this was my idea. I wanted, idea was I wanted to talk about Japan all night. <gasps> that, that was my idea, yeah. See, but oh. it's right here. Right there. Where is it? Oh, there. Oh, yeah, okay. Ain't I Misbehaving. Know. That's the name of the song. Mm -hmm. Key of G. <laughs> yeah. Now, when I see this written down here, here it is. Maybe our director, Hal Gertner, can get a shot of that. There it is, right there. <laughs> Key of G, right here, right there. Now, when I see that, I say to myself, oh, the woman's going to sing. So, you see, it's not really my fault. I, I, I'm sorry. I should have just said, yes, I sang Ain't Misbehaving in the Key of G. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, well, let's think about it. Let's change the topic here. Has anybody ever cried on this show? Yep. <laughs> you mean aside from myself? <laughs> uh, all right, let's talk about your film. You have two films coming out. Yes! I have a film coming out at the end of this week. Uh -huh. This is indeed September 9th. September 9th, yeah. Um, I have a film coming out uh, on the 13th, <laughs> and I understand that it's a masterpiece. Oh, that's good. That's good. It's, and uh, uh, well, that's the uh, Scorsese film Miracles? Or yes. Is that, yeah. And, and what do you play in that one? No, no, it's not no? the part. Uh, After Hours. God, I, uh, I'm so willing. It's, um... <laughs> Well, then let me get out the other questions. Um, now, now this is the one where you play, play a waitress with a big beehive haircut. Yeah, hairdo, yeah. I've talked yeah. about it so much. Yeah, I know. We've been waiting at the, uh, the long-anticipated release of this film. Seven years yeah. we've been waiting. But people have seen it and they think it's great. A few people have seen it, yes. They like it. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And Miracles. Yes. Well, now, what's that one? Well, that one, we don't know when that one's coming out. Uh-huh. It's, um... Maybe see it on an airplane one day? Maybe. <laughs> Christmas time is coming out. Oh, it sounds like a perfect Christmas film. Uh, yes, it does. Perfect holiday fair for you and the family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Terry, as, as always, it's been a delight. You're my favorite actress on the silver screen. Thank you really you, are. David. Now, are you all right? Uh-huh. Now, you're not mad at me over this thing, are you? No. But I'm mad at myself. But when you come back, think about doing a tune. Can I do more jokes? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like that? Maybe a medley. Think of a medley of tunes. <laughs> You didn't like the jokes about she sits so on the couch. No, I did. I enjoyed this. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. That I guess, yeah, you're the only one that can tell no, me. No, I, no, 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 no. I didn't say that. No, no, no. I think you're a very witty person. I think you're very funny and very talented. Johnny Carson likes me a lot. Uh. <laughs> but I like you better. Well, here, then. You're going to want to give this to Johnny, aren't you? <laughs> Yeah, this four-cent pamphlet will mean so much to Johnny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, well, now we have to go now, and I sense that you're steamed. Are you steamed? No. You're all right, aren't you? Mm, in a sense. But don't be mad at me. You know who to be mad at. Certain members of the production staff. Put oh, yeah. this on there. Ain't misbehaving, key of G. Right, okay, I know who that is. You're exactly right. right. It's not my doing. Okay. All right. <laughs> back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Welcome back to the show, and if you're just joining us, the deal is we're <clears throat> actually too tired to do a real show, so we're just up here in the office screwing around, like the way most of America works. <laughs> uh, okay, let me show you something. Maybe you have seen this. This is my ceiling, and you can stick pencils in certain kinds of acoustical tile, and uh, I have a, a freshly sharpened pencil that, well, there's one more time. You know, the, the height of this chair is off, isn't it? All right, one more. One more. All right, we'll come back to that. Here's another trick you can do if you have a dart board at home. And most of the darts uh, unscrew right off the tip. And so you're talking to your friend Paul. Say you and Paul are playing darts. And you surreptitiously remove the 
the brass point from the feathers. Paul doesn't know I've taken the point off, and you just do like this. Hey, Paul, wing. <laughs> it's uh, endless laughs. Let me try this once more. No, oh, let's see. The, we've altered the, the height of the chair. Well, uh, okay. Uh, you all right, Paul? Yeah, I'm enjoying the show very much. Did you have a nice day? I had a nice. It was hot. Oh, it's stinky hot. Record high humidity. Yeah, something's wrong because it shouldn't be this hot uh, this time of year. Yeah, the comet. Uh, what we're going to do now is, uh, uh, before we bring out Terry Gar, we're going to introduce you to uh, Robert Morton, who is, uh, what is what's his title? Segment. He's a segment producer, and, uh, and he uh, puts together uh, the, the guest interviews. Is Robert out there? Hi, Robert, come on in. Okay. Nice to see you. Nice so Robert see you. Morton. Well, how about a hand? Okay, I'm sorry. Now, uh, normally during the afternoon, Robert and I would go over uh, the segment that's going to be on the show. And, and uh, who do we have tonight, Robert? Uh, Richard Lewis. Richard Lewis. Who's on later in the show, and yeah. uh, Terry, who was right. hanging out. Uh, Richard Lewis is here with his family, isn't he? He came with his mother and his uh, mother's yeah. companion, yeah. friend of hers. Yeah. All right, it's all right. He's a little nervous about it. He okay, well, let's start with uh, Terry Gar. She, uh, you know, she's in this movie After Hours, which she's been plugging endlessly for the right. last have, couple of months. Have you seen the movie? Yeah, it's all right. Is it, is it a good movie? It's, it's all right. Yeah. It's not great. Doing you know, big business? Uh, mediocre business. It's, it's not killing uh, uh, somebody on the street. But it's, it's all right. It's, yeah. it's, it's not a bad movie. Have you seen the movie, Paul? After hour? Not yet. I'm meaning to see it. I think you, you better hurry. Should we go over and see it after the show? Yeah, we'll give it a nice. Yeah, so she, she wants to we'll talk, talk about the movie. Talk about the movie a little. Uh, you know, every time I do these pre-interviews, and, and she says she really doesn't have much to talk right, about. Right, so, right. And uh, she gets yeah. on and she whines, and everything's fine. Yeah, she's been on twenty times. Okay. But she's all right. Yeah. So we'll she's do always it. entertaining. See, so, you know, this is this is what goes on in the afternoon, and uh, uh, let's just bring her out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right outside. All right. Uh, my first guest tonight is a titillating conversationalist, a fine actress, and one of my favorite guests. She can currently be seen in the wildly successful and entertaining movie After Hours and will soon be seen in a television movie called Intimate Strangers. Please say hello to Terry Garr. Hi, Terry. How are you? Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Oh, Thank you. Nice to see you. Have a seat. You know Paul? Hi, Terry. I do know Paul. Paul and I aren't speaking. I don't know if you know that. Why aren't you and Paul speaking? It's a long story that I don't really want to go into right now. Uh, Paul Schaefer and you know Robert Morton and there's our producer Barry Sand. Hi. Jim Blaney over there, Bob Rooney in the back, Kevin Kay, and uh, Jeff Samaha, and uh, oh, there's Al Frisch. You know Al Frisch, Terry? Yes. Yeah. Hello. Nice to see you. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing okay. You know, it doesn't seem like we're doing the show like usually. We uh, it does seem like we are. It's it's different because there's no uh, studio audience. But it's something else though. Not just that there's no studio well, you've audience. You've never, been, you've never been in the office before. No, I haven't. Yeah. Any trouble getting to New York from California? No. Nice flight? Nice flight. I flew in with, um, with Sally Field and Diane Sawyer and Chad Everett and myself. And all I could think about on the plane was, if this plane crashes, what kind of billing I was going to get, yeah. you know? Well, you'd be right up there. Who would be, who would be, who would be mentioned before you in that group? Nobody. Well, no. Are you kidding? I think Sally Field... Oh, well, I, let's not speculate on something so tragic and ugly and <laughs> well, negative as no, that. You, you were doing the speculating, not me. Really. I know, I know. Well, it's for a split but second when we were flying, sure. yeah. yeah. Plus, uh, some guy ran on the plane, you know, and uh, wanted my seat. Well, I think we've all had that sensation. <laughs> but, you know, uh, now, uh, there was a mix-up There was a mix up on the, uh, you mean in the, uh, why did that happen? Because he had a letter from his orthopod that he had to sit next to the bulkhead. And he was up, like, waving this letter around in front of everybody. And then he was looking at me out of the corner of his eye. And then he finally went, you, you, can I have your seat? I don't even know what a bulkhead is. I don't, I don't but know I wasn't what an about to give. Is, but... that's, a, uh, that's a doctor with one leg. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an orthopedic, uh, I don't know. This guy was full of you know what. Yeah. So you were sitting at the, by the, the little uh, partition divider, the bulkhead. No, no, no. I was sitting by a window. I don't know what the bulkhead is. Yeah. I still don't know well, what That's the what it is. It's like a, it would be a wall around a doorway. It's, it's like a nautical term that they use in, in the uh, Oh, is too. it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so like now if I we know. Were in the, if we were in the Navy, this would be, right, this would be a bulkhead? Yeah. Are you and, just making and, this up? No, I'm not oh. making that up. And we have some people on the staff who qualify as bulkheads, too. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed. Believe me. Boy, it's ungodly hot, isn't it? Yes, it is. 
Uh, now, now tell me, you have this uh, time of year. What do you have there? You have uh, packets of stuff. Well, I have some some bad, strange mail that's from crazy people. I mean, look at these kind of. Do you get these kind of envelopes of stuff like that written? No. Crazy people, intense crazy people, and I was going to bring it out and sort of read some of it and laugh about it, but then I think. If I You're do just that, them. I'll just get more yeah. crazy mail like that. So I don't know. I just brought it out. These are the kind no, of no, scripts they send me. Madam President. Madam President. Can you picture me in this? Well, let me ask you about this. I know you have something here called uh, What is an Actor? <laughs> yes. This is also a, a statement given to me by one of my fellow actors, Mr. Rex Benson, who I just uh -huh. worked with. And, what, um, are, what are some Rex Benson films? I don't know what they are. <laughs> but he's just an, he was an actor who wrote this little thing about what. What is an actor? It's sort of like uh, that thing, the Desiderata. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah this is about yeah. what is an actor. Right. Do you mind? Just read this sentence right here. Without the actor, we would never know a Shakespeare or a Shaw or a Griffith, a Kazan, Preminger, Spielberg, or even a Silverman. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the enjoyable parts, and it uh -huh. gets better, but we're not here to discuss it. The actor feeds on the slightest twinkle from someone he touches. Now, is that true with you? <laughs> Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Now, are you going to take a shower for us tonight or not? Well... Because last time, Terry, you were here and you were going to sing. You told Mr. Morton, whom we've already met, we now know what he does on the show, you told him you'd be happy to do a number with Paul. You said the key was... What was the key, Paul? G. The key was G. And you, you were going to sing. What were you going to sing? I don't remember. What was she going to sing? Ain't Misbehaving. Ain't Misbehaving from the, the great Broadway show... Fun. Ain't misbehaving, yeah, uh, and and you didn't sing it though. Yeah. All right. How about taking a shower? No, wait a second. I'm not sure I understand the logic in this. If I don't, that's right. If the, I don't sing, I have to take a shower. That's right. Then, so As if we were in Russia. The jeopardy increases exponentially. Does this happen to other guests? Like you know, most of them. Yeah. It does. Yeah. We've had Ruth in the shower. Ruth Westheimer. In fact, we couldn't get her out of the shower. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but now, earlier you said you'd consider it I know, because I was it's... thinking about it because I, I've actually done things like that before. In, in movies? My, in movies and in commercials and stuff. But I don't think I, I, don't think I will now. I think Why I've, not? I've gone past taking showers on television. But it would be great. It would be exciting. It would be the kind of thing that people would be talking about. This is the kind of thing, if you do this tonight, you won't get bounced out of your airplane seat anymore. Yeah, I know. I guess I'm not famous enough. People would still pick on me. No, this but is I the don't think it's out. Well, all right, we'll talk this over, and uh, we'll do a commercial, and uh, we'll be right back with uh, Terry Gar. We're actually way too tired to do a real show here. Thanks. guest is Terry Garr and uh, by the way this is actually how, how uh, hot it is it's about the six o'clock now in Manhattan 75 degrees November 20th uh, and it's 64 percent relative humidity and it doesn't it frighten you when stuff like that happens absolutely don't you think that the something earth may strange. have tilted and something I don't something's happening let's be honest yeah yeah oh, well you know I thought you had an interesting theory about uh, uh, the, the human brain yes yes it worries me quite a bit because well, maybe it's just growing older, which I'm... You know, now, how old are you now? I'm admitting to growing older, no, but I'm not admitting to telling my age. But how old are you now? Let's see, I must be in my early 50s by now. <laughs> I mean, I've forgotten myself. <laughs> now, but, uh, you know, I keep forgetting things. In the middle of sentences, I forget, like, the name of a book, the name of a movie, the name of a person. And this is all information that I used to have on the tip of my tongue. Right. Like, I'd be firing on dead cells. You know, I go, okay, what about that? And it goes, <laughs> nothing. Nothing is there. Yeah. So why do you think that happens? I don't know. I think it's, like you said, just uh, uh, a function of growing older. But there's, or a malfunction there of are older. some cells there that have information that I wish would let go, that I have this information, like that Charles was married to Xavier Cougat, <laughs> but they're now divorced. I don't care about this anymore, but my, my mind won't let go of it. Uh -huh. or, or that Connie Stevens and Eddie Fisher were married. I don't care, okay? I know it. Now get rid of that information and let me remember the theory of relativity, which I used to know very well. I could explain. Did you really? See, I never, never knew it, never understood. Well, it's very simple, but I can't remember what it is. But see, but see maybe, maybe we retain the information that is important to us. Maybe, it's, maybe we have no control over it. Maybe for you to get through life, 
All you need to know is about Charo and Xavier Cugat. Trust me, I don't need to know this. No one really needs to know this. I don't know why I know this. Yeah. Do, do you know a lot of baseball statistics, probably? Well, not much. I mean, people who really know baseball really know baseball. But why? What's the point? It's sort of a hobby, an avocation. All right, so that's okay. It's the national pastime. I know that. Yeah. It's a hobby to know those baseball statistics, but not for me to know about people's ex-husbands and ex-wives and then other kinds of things and who were the monkeys and stuff like that. I don't Oh, by really the way, you know, I saw, I saw you in that movie and I thought that was very funny when you talked about the monkeys. Thank you very much. You, Terry, you want to do anything? We have the bullhorn. We have an open window. It's Radio City. Did you ever appear at Radio City? No, but my mother did. Yeah, your mom, mom yeah. worked Rockette. on costumes there. Rockette. And she was a rocket. You want to holler anything at anybody on the street? No, thanks. You want to take a shower? <laughs> no, I like that you have all my films. Yeah, there. we have. Yeah, we have all of your films. It's the the Terry Gar Library. Anybody have a question for Terry? Would she take Kevin? a shower? Kevin, Barry, what was it? Would she take a shower? You want to you want to try it? Do we have to show a film of hers or not? Barry, get off this now. <laughs> just get off it. I'm not going to. But do see, it. we're not good. We know we wouldn't see you nude. Is the point? You'd just be in there soaped up. It would be great. Plus, you look, know, everywhere look, I look, look, I see tapes of movies that I'm in. We're all big fans. <laughs> do it for the guys. Look, do it for the pizza kid. He'll be in here in a minute. <laughs> How did you want to get out of Indianapolis? <laughs> I'm sorry. And yes, I have that tape in the know. other room. One million no, cash, no. and it's yours. All right. uh, oh, so what do we do now? You don't want to take a shower? Come no, on, and yes, not only that, I'm very sorry I said the thing about the brain cells. And I, Why? I, that was very funny. Nah, I, I, you know, you can't tell what's funny and what isn't funny in this office. <laughs> you can't. No, this is, that was very funny. I don't care. I mean, I, I'm sorry that I brought it up, and I'm almost sorry I came. What can't. the hell is wrong with you? It was fine. I'm it was crazy, funny. all right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, what the hell's the matter with me? You've met me 50 times. You know that I'm crazy. Uh, all right, well. What is an actor? Yeah, we have the little, uh, the Rex Benson poem of the same name. Uh, well, I'll be here. Now, what are you working on now? You have a TV movie, yes, Intimate, yes. Intimate Strangers. Yes, and. Uh, I did an MTV or some kind of a video about um, She's Not There, The Zombies. Mm -hmm. Now, why is they making videos out of old songs? Yeah, it's called Deja Vu. Yeah. And that'll Who's be producing this vehicle? Emily Cohen and, I don't know, some people. Do you think this show has a future? They're just going to show old, old videos? Yes. No, no, no. They knew old songs with new videos. The reason I was chosen to play a ma magician's assistant in this thing, She's Not There, yeah. is because I know how to uh, elevate. Or how you say levitate. it? Levitate. Well, they're two different things. Elevates what you do in the elevator, right? That's right. That's right. Okay. Or you, you could elevate, I guess, your consciousness. And you levitate is to oh leave God. the... Oh, God. I am my own best audience, you know? You're very, you're a very charming and funny woman. Please take a shower. Please. <laughs> Please. Okay. All right. Oh, really? Fine. Yeah. Come on. Just come on, come on. We'll just, I tell you what, go in there and we'll, we'll leave you alone. And you, when you're ready, you just, when you're, you know, all we want to do is see, oh, excuse me, geez, Gene, are you all right? God, nearly knocked him out the 14th floor window. There it is. See, look, we've, we've, you can't see through there. At least you can see through there. You can't see through there. Look, come here. Get in there. You can see right through there. You can't see through there. It's opaque shadows. Is I all you can, can see, see you. Well, that's because I'm not wet. I'm not going to do this. Come on. No, I just can't. Do it. Really, he said if I right, turned we'll the water on the electrician, I, I, I would electrocute myself. Well, you won't, the... <laughs> you won't be, you won't have the microphone on. What okay, do you think? Okay, my do final you... answer on this is no. Well, think about it. Just okay. think about it. Stay right there. And what are we doing? We do, oh, oh, you, would you like a beer? No, thank you. A uh, couple of beers, maybe take a shower. <laughs> maybe. All right. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, welcome back. Uh, coming up in this next half hour, rock and roll accordionist Roberta Rubinson will be here, and uh, comedian Richard Lewis, who's here with his mother today. Uh, oh, join us November 30th at 1130. Uh, we have another 90-minute show. Uh, it's our holiday film festival. Bette Midler has done a film for us. Andrea Martin and Catherine O'Hara have done a film. Why didn't you get in on this? I don't know anything about 
<laughs> Michael Keaton, weren't you with him and Mr. Mom? I was. Oh, that was a great movie. Thank you so much. Uh, Harmon Killebrew, uh, Hall of Famer, will be doing a film for us. Harry Shearer has done one for us. And uh, Paul, you guys have your own music video. Film, yeah. And we know a lot of people will be watching because we worked really hard. And uh, you'd be home watching that uh, at 10 o'clock anyway, Roger Mudd's American <laughs> Almanac. <Yeah. coughs> so right after that, you can watch our show. Uh, this is the gentleman with the pizza. Where are you from? What, uh, what's the name of the company? Yeah, CD. Where is it? Here, oh, here, Hero City. How many do we get? How many pies? Ten. Ten. What do I owe you? What's the bill here? Oh, this is Terry Gower, by the way. Hi. Yeah. Nice to Harley see you. Harley Sawyer and Mr. Mom? Yes. Close Encounters of the Third Kind? <laughs> I don't know. Black he Stallion? Doesn't, he doesn't really know who That's I all right. Am. What do we owe you? 138. 138. One, two, three, four, five. There's 100. One, two, there's 40. There you go. Okay, Thank you very well, much. You. Have a nice day. Okay, nice. Bye. And this so is nice to meet you. Oh, excuse me. Would you guys like to, Would either of you guys like to take a shower? Ah, <laughs> oh, hit the road. Hit the road. Come on. All right, we're going to go down the hall. Anybody want... Oh, we're going to look at uh, some stupid pet tricks, videotapes that people have sent in to us. Well, if you'd like, sure. Come on down. And uh, we're out in the hallway. This will be uh, down in the producer's office again. This is a... Um, a closet where we keep a lot of stuff that people send to us. Stuff like this, you know. We don't know exactly if, uh, if that's me or, or David Hartman. Or who else did that look like? Somebody else. I can't remember who else. Uh, here, here's a, a painting of Pete Rose in one of my suits. Uh, oh, we got one of these. It was a uh, Larry Bud slept here, apparently from the Port Authority. <laughs> And uh, now look at this. This you, you put uh, cups of stuff in your hat and you drink out of it. Does Ted Koppel get this kind of stuff? I don't know. All right. And uh, here's some more of our uh, writing staff. This is actually, uh, what are you guys watching? Different strokes. Different strokes. Yeah. All right. Knock yourselves out. We have pie, by the way. All right. All right. And here's, a, here's one of the smaller offices right there. You know, if this was a New York City apartment, it would go for about 1700 That thing in there. Oh, this is nice. Here's another little trick here at the drinking fountain. Uh, if you're ever uh, at a party or something, do this. Just uh, come up to the drinking fountain like this. I don't know if you can hear it. Oh, geez, I bet I had about 50 beers. Oh, okay. Maybe you don't want to do that. I don't know. Uh, more of our staff. Oh, my God, you are the staff, aren't you? All right. Now, this is kind of... Hi, how you doing? Shecky. We saw him nude a couple of weeks ago. Hi, what are we watching? Oh, you're watching this show. Kind of a rare thing. And, oh, this is our uh, snack center. We have uh, popcorn and uh, beverages. Now, this really steams me. Look at this. NBC won't let me pick out my own publicity still. Look at that. This is the one they send out. Oh, it stinks. All right, come on in. This is uh, Hal Gurney, uh, Gurney's office. This is where he's directing the show. How's it going, Hal? Fine, Dave. Good. Everything all right? Everything's fine. Okay, we're going to go in here and look at the uh, stupid pet trick right, tapes. All right, thank you very much. Well, it's much cooler over here. Yeah, we have air conditioning here, then. All right. Come on in. This is, uh, this is where uh, Lori Guthrie would be sitting, but she's down the hall watching, watching the show. And uh, this is uh, Barry's office. Come on in. Th oh, this, by the way, is Sue Hall. Oh, uh, did you meet Terry Gar? Yes. Nice I to did. meet you. Did you want some pizza or something? Uh, later, maybe. Okay. Paul, did you get any pie? I have taste. It was nice. Terry oh. and I are speaking. Why, why are she speaking? I don't know how it happened. Or just one of those show business those deals? Things, yeah, uh, I, I, I hate to see you kids falling apart like this. Well, maybe we'll make up later. All right. That's how it goes. Uh, Sue, Sue is in charge of uh, the stupid pet trick uh, segment on our show, and uh, people send you videotapes of stuff that their animals do at home, right? That's right. And, and the, what we're going to see here tonight, are they going to be on our show? And if not, why aren't they going to be on the show? Well, most of these tricks can't be done in our studio for one reason or another. Usually cats get spooked in the studio and uh, a lot of the, you'll see these dog tricks that we just can't, can't be set done. it up. Okay, so who are we going to look at first? We have, uh, I guess I have the information, Faye and Bill Murrell from Huntsville, Alabama and their cat Shandy. Okay. Yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. All right, we'll plug this in. Sounds very good. Have you ever seen the stupid pet tricks on this show, Tara? Have you watched this show? Time to time. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, their cat Shandy and Shandy's trick is that he eats with a uh, spoon. Eats with a, a spoon. Yeah. Did I do something wrong? Oh, I guess play. you have play, don't you? Yeah, pretty clever guy. <laughs> How did he get a show? There you go. Boy, I could use a shower myself. All right, uh, Shandy, there's the cat. Oh, that's nice. The kitty helping himself to a, a big plate of refried beans. Mm. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> How would you like to drop by their house for Sunday, Sunday dinner and... 
<laughs> the now, we could do this in the studio, I guess, couldn't we? Well, uh, we'd have to let the cat be there for a long time to get used to the area before we want to eat. And how did they have the spoon there on the cat? I think they uh, kind of, like, tied it to the tied paw. It? It's not stapled or anything? It's, no. No, I that's only not. a joke. <laughs> that was just a joke. Okay, so that was one. Uh, that was Shandy, eating with a spoon. Mm -hmm. Have you been in touch with these people? Well, I heard that these, uh, the owners of this cat are in Germany right now. Oh, touring with the cat? Oh, I don't think so. But. They're making a fortune. <laughs> Germans love that kind of stuff. They go crazy for that. This is uh, Kathy Panera from Emerson, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And Kathy has a horse, Barney. Barney selects soda from a machine and drinks it. Mm. Okay. The horse, Barney. Oh, that's nice. You, you want to use the machine after the horse has drooled all over, don't you? Oh, no, he drinks it. Is that the last one? Oh. We got one more. Yeah, okay. We got another great one. I tell you what, load it up real quick and we'll just look at it as we're going out. Okay. Uh, okay, what do, what do we do after this? Richard Lewis is here and then we have a commercial. And, uh, and, oh, and Terry Gar said just then, she said she would take a shower. Uh, and this next one is uh, um, dog named Willie. Dog named Willie from Logan, Utah. The dog's mm -hmm. owner is Darren Allred. Mm -hmm. now, this is pretty strange. Uh, Willie swings on a rope over a swimming hole. This would be Willie, Willie swings from uh, Logan, Utah. There's Willie. Okay. Have you seen this? Oh, oh. oh. Yeah. It took him about 20 tries. He doesn't seem to be fit. Yeah. He's helping. Oh. Oh. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> now he he just uh It's about twenty minutes of the tape of just this. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that very strange? Well no, he's doing that to himself, so I don't think it's torture. Yeah. My god, I just hope they don't let him drive after this. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like some, something you'd see in Cuba before the revolution, doesn't it? <laughs> now, you can't bring him to New York to do this? Uh, what about it? I, we, well, we don't I, have I a... Have to put down a we'd have to get a swimming yeah. pool and a... Oh, God. Oh, my God. Cookie bread on going. And they, they actually have to pull him off the rope, don't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll be back, uh, folks. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, that's a sweetie. Look at this. Mr. Menace Trilogy. Do you think Mr. Wilson's the Antichrist? <laughs> I don't know. Do you uh, know? You're okay. going to be at the Carlton Theater, Minneapolis, this, this, this weekend. weekend. Right, then I'm And you'll be here in town at Caroline's and Zaney's. In Chicago, the first two weeks of Chicago. Well, December. a man your age shouldn't be working a place named Zaney's, that's for sure. Uh, wh what do we do? A commercial? And now you've got to get in the shower. Now go in there oh, yeah. and get ready. We have two minutes. Go into the shower right now. Come on, Terry. Please. Come on. I right know. Yeah. yeah. Get out. Come on. How about a bath? This. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right. But uh, see. <laughs> stuff under the cross. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Paul. We're uh, almost out of time. I want to thank uh, Richard Lewis and uh, Richard's mother. Nice to see you again, Blanche. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, Terry Gar, by the way, is actually in, in the uh, bathroom and getting ready to shower. Well, that'd be pretty neat, you know. And uh, this is Roberta Rubinson. Roberta, uh, uh, I'm sorry we didn't have enough time for you to play a whole number, but play a little something for us on the, uh, on the accordion there. Just a little. Yeah, just a little something. <laughs> Now, um, tomorrow night, uh, Ralph McDonald will be here with the band. Oh, go ahead and play a little more. Uh, Jerry Hall will be here, uh, the final episode of The Fugitive Guy, and uh, Ed Begley Jr. will be here tomorrow. And uh, how much time do we have? Is she, is she in there? Okay, is it all right to go in? Go ahead and continue playing. Thank you very much, Richard. Okay. Oh, oh my God. Whoa. Now, just go in there, and oh, you've got your... Come on, go in there and... Go, go in there and just say goodnight. Get all wet, and, but you have your uh, hose on. I know, on. well, I can't take them off without 10 cameras in here. <laughs>
Alright, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll turn around, Carl. Turn around. Okay. Oh, no. No, okay. Oh, no. Okay, she's. No. While she's slipping into the shower, we'll. Alright, go ahead. We're no. not. No! <laughs> Wait a minute, okay. Alright, are you all set? Okay, here we go. Are we out of time? Is that... Oh, we got 30 seconds. Oh, we got 30 seconds, Terry. Go ahead. What is what? Take a shower. I can't. I don't have my underpants on. Oh. <laughs> Dude, this isn't working out. It's It's working beautifully. No, it isn't. Tur just turn on the shower. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Come on. Five seconds. Just turn. Yeah! I hate you! <laughs> Why am I doing this? They're off there. Yeah. Terrible mess. That was nice, though. Did you enjoy that, Paul? Nice. A I scientific had a good time. E experiment. A real significant broadcast application. Look at this state of the art blowgun. <laughs> yeah. Try one more. Now you're talking. Try one more here. Yeah. Oh, no. One bounce off. What, how are we doing with Stevie Nicks, by the way? Stevie. going to be here? All right. Can't get her. There you are. We got a great, uh, great show. We're very excited whenever this woman is. Uh, by the way, Parents' Night is uh, Tuesday next week. A week from tonight is Parents' Night. Your parents going to yes, be here, Paul? My parents will be here. Al, your parents going to be here? No, Dave. Okay. <laughs> Barbara. Will be here, though. Barbara, are your parents going to be here? Yeah. All right. All right. Barbara's Dave. the one who gave me this terrible cold, by the way. No, she did. She really did. Uh, I think I'm losing my sight. I got black dots <laughs> yeah, in the middle. Well, you a complete neurological workup, Paul. You should, you should do that. Is that what it is? Uh, it's always a pleasure to welcome my first guest. Knock that off of there, Kevin. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I, feel, I felt like an animal in a petting zoo then. It, uh, it's always a pleasure to welcome my first guest to this program. She is a very talented person, and tonight we're going to treat her with the dignity and respect that she so rightly deserves. She, she was nominated for an Academy Award, you know, for Tootsie, a couple of years ago. She's a fine actress. She's soon to be in a motion picture called Miracles with Tom Conti. Please say hello to the one, the only, Terry Garr. How are you? Fine. You look great. Thank you. You look great. We're happy you're here. Thank you. And I just, I just take a second here to extend an apology on behalf of myself and the entire organization that runs this program every night for the last time you were on the show. We, we asked you to take a shower. And I know that you were a little upset by the whole thing. And I just want you to know that we appreciate you going along with that. And, and we're sorry. And we probably shouldn't have done it. And we won't ask you to shower here again. Calm down. Well. Well, thank you. I, that's very nice of you. I, I thought about that, and it, w it was, um, you only acted in a very, um... See, we were in that room trying to do the show, and all of a sudden realized that that was a room with all the air sucked out of it. It was a terrible place. It was like, and the show wasn't going very well, so you thought you'd pick on me. No, no, the show was... Say, Terry, why don't no. you take a shower? Why don't you take a shower? It was crazy. No, it was the crazy. The show was going quite nicely. I wish I had a penny for every person that came up to me on the street and said, why did they do that to you and all that yeah. stuff, you know? You'd have change for a quarter. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> but, you know, but uh, anyway, no, the show was going along just fine. It would have been a keen show even had you not showered, but I, I felt like maybe it was kind of a, a sexist thing to do, you know? You know, because yeah. I didn't ask anybody else to shower that yeah. night. Yeah. And, and the gentlemanly thing would have been for me to say, oh, forget it, I'll shower. Yeah. Yeah, but I didn't, it didn't occur to me. Anyway, I'm sorry. Nice to see you. Well, thank Let you. Let me read something here. Ter so this is from Tom Shales, uh, the respected... Don't, don't pick at the set. What is wrong with you? Look how this is made. Well, it's don't pick at it. Very Just... well made. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Shales, Washington Post yes. uh, writer and a revered television critic. Terry Gar has... Is this about the shower? No, it's about you. Oh. It's about your TV movie. Uh, Terry Gar has a gorgeous dignity. She is an infinitely rechargeable source of incandescence. In tonight's CBS... Oh, it was on CBS. Of course it was on CBS. 
Anyway, he, he loved the, he loved you in the Intimate Strangers, that uh, television movie. Well, that's nice. Is it too late to plug that? It's been on, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, what what is Miracles? Uh, you and Tom Conti. Yes. You know, wouldn't it be funny if there was no movie called Miracles with me and Tom Conti? <laughs> yeah. There isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been plugging it for two and a half years, and there really is no movie. Yeah. What about the movie with uh, me and Mickey Rooney about about the people on Mars? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that'll be coming out soon too. Uh -huh. Everyone should go see that. Uh, what, what was the feeling on the set with you and uh, the Mick? Was it good? You mean the Rooner? Yeah, the Rooner. <laughs> He tried to calm me down when I worked with him. Yeah, oh yeah, he's a real easygoing guy. <laughs> yeah, he is. Really kind of a low-key fellow. Uh, now, now tell me about some of your friends. What kind of friends do you have? What? <laughs> I said, what kind of friends do you have? Oh, I see. Um, well, I have a different kinds of friends, uh, writers and actors and artist <laughs> types. No uh, stockbrokers, though, yet. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I have this friend who's in the Strindberg Society, and I'm going to join it myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to join. <laughs> Did you hear about it? Well, I got the membership application. The motto is the search for excellence. Oh. And you don't have to uh, pay any dues, but you have to have paid your dues to be in it. Mm -hmm. who, now, who is Strindberg? Strindberg was a playwright. Oh, and, he, and he's the one who's sponsoring the organization? No, he's dead and gone. No. no. So, so, so the, 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 his, 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 he, he, the, the organization perpetuates what he stood for? Yes. Yeah. You know what's funny about this? I don't remember any of this. This is stuff I told Morty today on the phone, isn't it? Now tell him who Morty is. People don't know him. It could be like uh, the guy who does your nails or something. Tell him. It is the guy that does. It, Robert Morton, I gave these notes about Strindberg, and now I don't remember. Oh, yes. Well, this is the worst time I've ever been on your show. Maybe it's better I do the shower thing. Let's go shower. No. Let's, come on, let's go. No, 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 no. <clears throat> oh, God, is this unbelievable. I should be more prepared. Are we done with the Strindberg system? No, 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 no. There's one other thing. See, if you don't know who Strindberg is, this isn't going to make any sense. But the guy, this friend of mine who was starting the society was in a Strindberg play once and called up this friend of mine and says, well, she said, how'd it go? He said, I got all my laughs. Mm -hmm. See, now, if you know who Strindberg was, you'd, you'd find that to be amusing, because he doesn't write any laughs. Mm -hmm. He writes about suicide in the fjords. Mm. So you'd have to know who that is yeah. to get a laugh out of it. Yeah. Otherwise, um, uh-oh. What else? Nothing. That's just the Strindberg Society. <laughs> Anybody in the Strindberg Society throw eggs in fans that you know of? No, no, I think that's, that's very... Um, Why don't you a sing a little garden. something? Do a number for us. <laughs> a new rap song. Yeah. I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. I'm not... Have you ever seen that commercial? Yeah. <laughs> it goes on. <laughs> well, let's hear a little more of it. Paul, can you help out here? <laughs> I'm not a monkey, but I play... <laughs> this is all... You know, this is all off the top of my head. None of this is planned. Can you believe it? Yes, they did. You know, even, even as we speak, I can hear Tom Shales having a change of heart. But you know... What was it about quiet dignity? Oh. And a, and a, and a rechargeable incandescence. Well, we're going to pause here for a commercial, and uh, we'll be right back for more of this. Oh, look at this. Have you, have you ever heard this before, Carrie? You heard that before? Isn't that yes, nice? once before I was born. <laughs> I know, but don't you think that's amazing? Yeah. What do you What do you suppose is in there? Messages. No. <laughs> what do you mean no? Well, maybe there are messages, yeah. but don't you think that's amazing? Look, you have a little rock there, and you mm -hmm. pick it up and you shake it, and it makes those noises. Where did you get that? I got it from our drummer. <gasps> Where did he get it? Well, he got it from a friend in Nebraska. Steve. Yeah, yeah. So what are you doing now? What's uh, what are you doing for fun? What's new in your life? What are you what are you what are you doing after the show? Where are you going tonight? I don't know, but you know I was thinking about when you apologized for before. When yeah, I, I thought we were off to a really good start then, and <laughs> yeah. it turned out I was wrong. So I'm going to bring it up again because it was oh, okay. working so well. Oh, okay. Well, since you want to apologize to me and be nice to me, why don't you give me some stuff? Well, we have this this junky stuff here is all we have to give you. You're not getting this. Doesn't that put you in the mind of fairies, this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, what oh, do you want? Funny. You can have the okay, uh, Flintstones. Flintstones bubble bath. You okay. want you want to take a shot with the uh, turbo dart? No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, oh, we have. Can to... I see that painting? I'll get to. Wait a minute. Oh, here's something. That's it. A... Oh, diet borscht. Diet borscht. Mm -hmm. Would you like a little of that? I use this all the time. Okay. That's for my car, though. Rachel, <laughs> Rachel McLeish. Flex appeal. There you go. Uh, I know you work out a lot. Oh, I don't think so. I don't want this. Oh, here. I know you were admiring this last night. This is Raquel Welch's uh, beauty book. No, thanks. Oh, this is nice. Here's Willard Scott's The Joy of Living. <laughs> boy, boy, is this thing hot. You can't buy a copy of this anywhere. <laughs> what is that painting? Can oh, here, we see how about this? It's a, a picture of me as a disturbed child. <laughs> Have you seen this man? Oh, here we go. Kelly Savalas record? I have that. <laughs> yeah, that uh, Marv Albert's got a brother who makes these chocolate hockey pucks. You can, you can have that. Who's Marv Albert? He does sports for NBC. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, we're taking up all your time with this junk. It's okay. I, I, I don't have anything to say. Well, then why, why did you come to be on the show? Tell them why you came to be on the show. Tell them exactly the truth, why you come to be on the show. Tell them. Come on, tell them. No. Come on, tell them. <laughs> come on, tell them. It's now it's not a big deal. <laughs> Go ahead. They're going to expect some big thing. That I'm no, say. tell them. So that I can get plane tickets. To yeah, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. So, so she can get plane tickets. And we'd like you to have this, Terry. It's another picture some, sent in by somebody who watches the show. That's, that's, that's me. The, Wait, do, who's that? That's David uh, Horton. He's the artist. That's mm -hmm. David Horton. That's me. And, of course, Michelangelo's David. This looks good with the diet part. Well, Terry, I don't know what good. to say. I don't know. I know. I'm sorry to take up your time. No. I, I have other... Want to hear some of my ideas for TV series that well, I'm not going to do? we have to go now. Oh, whew. <laughs> okay, then I'll save it for next time. Did you get plenty of tickets this time? That's not really why I do the show. Oh, okay. Why, why do you do the show? Because I like to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, I suggest you go back to your hotel room and think about what almost happened here tonight. <laughs> Last time I did the show, that this is the kind of show that I I unconsciously wanted to give you, kind of a, a oh don't say that a, no, a don't cesspool. Say that. No, it's not a cesspool. We we have to go now, uh, but uh, you'll come back again soon, won't you? Maybe. All right, we'll be we'll be right back. <laughs> what we'll do, Paul. Next Monday, we'll do it again, and we'll make it a little peppier. Okay, that was the reverent, uh, sovereign version of it. Yeah, but I, uh, I don't we know. Do it wasn't not. inspirational as I had hoped. We'll do it. Uh, we'll do it's a, a special. It's a beautiful song, and so it deserves to be done properly. Mm, well, give me so another. if you folks can pass those lyric sheets back in. <laughs> no, no. Oh, <laughs> Fights breaking out up there. But, you know, I, uh, uh, we don't mean any disrespect to the song or to the country, because it's a beautiful song. Yes. But we want to nail it next time. We'll just, boom. We want to make the hair stand up on the back of people's neck. One more shot at it. We'll see what we can see. What well, we can you're do. the one who was leading it for you, America. <laughs> well, I let it off a little slow. I don't know. I. Uh... But see, we wanted it to counteract the sleepy weekend we all had. But instead, well, we'll do it next Monday. Okay. My first guest tonight is one of our favorites on this program. She is a talented actress, an engrossing conversationalist, and one fabulous babe. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Hollywood, California, please say hello to Terry Gar. Very nice to see you. Thank you. How are you doing? Okay. You look great. Thanks, Dave. You look terrific. Thank you. Just came in from California last night, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Did you Did you hear O Canada, by the way? Yes, I did. What'd you think? I was very impressed. No, it was a little, a little slow, wasn't it? Yeah. 
We, we, want, we want it like, like lumberjacks and mounties would be singing it. You know, a lot of bravado and a lot of... Bravado? <laughs> bravado. I know, I know what you're trying to say. Bravado. What did I say? Bravado? I don't yeah, know. Bravado. A lot of, a lot of uh, uh, gust. Gusto. But you're, you're from Canada, right? Yes, ma'am. So, this is very nice for Paul. Nice. I can feel at home after all these years. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, that wasn't really my intention, but oh. I just think it's, it's such a great and inspirational piece of music. How you doing? Okay. What do you got for us tonight? You always come prepared. You're one of our favorite uh, guests on the little uh, clubhouse here. And You're just saying that to tease me. I never come prepared. I, I always have nothing to say and nothing to talk about. But I, understand, I, just... I understand tonight you do have things you want to talk about. I, I don't. I, I, I had all these notes, and I couldn't read them, and I left them backstage anyway. Oh, you if made you notes? Were to read them, when did I, you make the notes? Well, you know, as I go through life, I write down things that I think will mean something mm -hmm. if I ever get asked to do a talk show, and I do get all, uh, asked frequently <laughs> and <laughs> so i i was reading these notes and they didn't make any sense you know it says things like chicken on a stick Gaddafi goes to the coast i mean i don't know what it means yeah so what's the point of bringing it out here it's like i'd like to just make these jokes so you w when did you make these little notes were you i make them from time to time during the course of my I life see. you yeah. know when and, then, and now that you try to decipher them they mean nothing they mean meaningless yeah. totally meaningless yeah. so uh you flew in late last night Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. I I'm really not going to talk about this. This other guy who was on the flight, I came in with a comedian on the show. Mm -hmm. Oh, the, the young man who's with us tonight? Dom, Dom. Dom We were in a terrible pl plane uh, flying oh, through a storm and stuff like that. It was very mm -hmm. scary. Yeah. My whole life passed before me. Do you, do you not like to fly? I'm not so excited about it. How about you? Well, I used to not like it. I like it, I like it better and better. You do? Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't mind it so much that you, that you interviewed some guy out here that was a pilot, and he said these planes, the six, 767. 67, yeah. 7, They're 67. pretty good. So yeah. once we get on one of those, we yeah. kind of kick back. and. That's right. Well, the thing that right. interests me about that is the guy said that uh, one time they were flying to Europe, and uh, about an hour into the flight, uh, somebody mentions that Jane Fonda is on, on the airplane, and so he goes back there to try and talk to her. Like he's got nothing better to do than bother passengers. <laughs> you know, that's a little unnerving, isn't it? But there's lots of pilots up there, aren't there? And then they tell you that the whole thing's running... 767, there's two. Two guys. Don't tell me that. There's only about two six guys, guys up there. There's about and and six only one of them has been trained no, on no, the 67. No, no, no. <laughs> and not only that, if they were to pass out or something, it's all on computers. That's I mean, right. they're just like, once they punch it in, then the plane can fly itself. This I've is what that, I've yeah. been led to I've believe. been told that the, the L-1011 can actually land itself. Yeah. I think you need somebody to take them off, but they can actually uh, land by themselves. Do you think this is a very interesting conversation? I don't care. It's my show. <laughs> I know, I'm fascinated by aviation and aeronautics and that, and that sort of thing. I'm sure you are. Do you know are. anything about Bernoulli's Law or the Venturi Principle? <laughs> well, let's yeah, go. I know quite a bit about it. Well, it's the principle of lift. One of those, is, I think it's uh, Bernoulli's Law, is the principle of lift. Air pressure and so forth. It's fascinating. Well, that's... <laughs> that's what keeps you up there. It's based on a, 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 a constant uh, aerodynamic principle. And, and aerodynamic principles don't come and go. They're always there. You've thought about this while you're up there. I mean, I've thought about it myself, thinking, how can this big, heavy, fat plane be up in the sky? Right. And I, that's as far as I got. But you went into the Bernini Law, or whatever that Bernini is. Bernini Law, that's right, the it, Bernini Law. He was also a painter, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm terribly sorry. About what? That I'm not getting to my notes. You said your notes were crap anyway. <laughs> I don't believe I said that. Well, I said, said I couldn't decipher them. Oh. But they said the same thing about Einstein's theory at one point. He couldn't decipher them, but it didn't mean they were meaningless. <laughs> All right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you have some thoughts on relativity you'd like to share with us. Um, all right, we're going to do a commercial, uh, Terry. Thank God. And then we'll be back and you'll have a real segment. Okay. All right, we'll be right back here. <laughs> People are from California and Canada. Some are local people, and uh, others are tourists, vacationers. Mm -hmm. And they've uh, come to see the show. I see. And many are here to see you, specifically. Okay. You used to... Uh... <laughs> tell, tell me about some of the uh, shows you used to do here in New York. Didn't you do uh, programs here? Does this sound like a lead into some kind of little story I might have about something? <laughs> yeah, no, don't start. You know, I, I'm sorry, but I, I just hate... I ha it's my job to punch holes in pomposity and 
in, in any way. Harry, you know, a few minutes earlier you were saying, what about my notes? What about my notes? So we come back. I open up question okay. number two, okay. right off the notes. I and, and right away, you, then you mock me about it. <laughs> so here's your little notes. There you go. You may have no notes. Done it again. So. So. I thought uh, that at one point it was, oh, God, I'm It's very funny about this show I did that was all about Ripley's Believe It or Not. Now, of course, it's not going to be funny at all. Remember when I came on here one time and I tried to tell jokes? Oh, yeah, I do remember that. It doesn't work with me. So when I come out here set to do something funny, it's not. All right, well, tell us a little story about your life now. Just anything. Just a little story. Like, what have you been doing? What are you doing well, now? You know, I How do you feel? I feel I, I recently was kind of sick. You're I had this limp and I had all these uh, tests, medical tests, and I was waiting one day for the medical tests, and I was also waiting for a guy to come and fix my dryer. Mm -hmm. And it was sort of like... You know... This is serious. You know, it was like the yin and yang between death and my dryer. And, uh... Some, some of your better clinics will do both, you know. I know. They really will. I know. Some small appliance repair and uh, complete medical workup. So this particular day, neither, neither person, the doctor never called and the guy never fixed my dryer. But now everything's okay. So the, Except for at one point, the doctor said I might have this very strange disease. That is a thing that happens to some people that, uh, where every third person they think is Stu Nahan. Have mm. you heard of this? I thought this no, would be one of my it. big jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, is, is this a re Thanks. See, nobody, that, that's a very funny joke, but first of all, people thought it was probably a real disease. And secondly, uh, many people may be not familiar with the, the fine work that Stu Nahan does. I was, told to, I was told to say that joke by you know who. He said, oh yeah, Dave will like that one. He just stared at me like I had something on my chin. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, no, I, was, I just thought maybe that, uh, by contrast, my deadpan appearance uh -huh. might help the... Mm -hmm. Sort of like Laurel and Hardy. Go, yeah, mm -hmm. excellent. Exactly. Yeah. Laurel and Hardy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stu, Stu Nahan was a, a sportscaster in Los Angeles for a long time. And, and no one knows who that is. Well, and he also appears in Rocky movies. He's always the guy doing the... Oh, the, right, right. The, uh, the well, wouldn't that be a strange disease, then? That, uh, that if every third person you saw looked like Stu Nahan? It wouldn't necessarily be funny, but it would be mighty strange. <laughs> yeah, it would. Okay. So, so once, I'm just going to go to... Oh, what about this? Wait a minute, wait a minute. What if the disease was every third person you saw was Ed Meese? See? Now that that at least got a <laughs> that at least got a moan. Now, do you think a lot of people know who Ed uh, uh, Ed me? Yeah, wh that what he looks like. I have no idea what he looks like. Yeah, you see. Yeah. So that wouldn't. The but, is it the Attorney General? Is that what Ed me says? Something like that. He's the guy that uh, started this pornography business. Yeah. Let's investigate it. Let's yeah. get to the bottom of top, this. Top top cop in America. This dirty filthy stuff. Yeah. yeah. But I do think it was interesting. I watched some of the hearings, and the guy said, we're not attacking the top-of-the-line publications like Penthouse and Payboy. I mean, he made the Freudian slip of Payboy. Payboy. I thought it was damn yeah. interesting. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Dollar bill of the month. Yeah. You know, that's what it's about. Let's be honest. Dollar bill of the month? Well, it's about making money. Oh, making money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I exploiting see. people, but yeah. you don't want to get into that, no, I'm sure. No, sure we do. We do. We have to, we have to pause for station I'm sure identification. sure you do. And then <laughs> no, we'll be here. <laughs> we'll be right back, though. We'll be right back. So with us tomorrow, George Carlin will be here and Bill Zanker. That's right, Bill Zanker will be here, so come early, stay late. Bill Zanker will be joining us. This man is the founder of the Learning Annex right here in New York City, and we'll be talking to Bill Zanker. About Zanker's his, away. Yeah, that's right, about his career and his Learning Annex. Bill Zanker. Now, did you have a little something else you wanted to do before we go on? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to die. No, no, no. You wanted to, you wanted to mention the little songs you did. What was that? Oh, or, no. no. What was it? There was, there was songs from Ripley's Believe yeah, It or let's, Not. Yeah, let's, yeah, quickly well, do it. I was in a show that was all about Ripley's Believe right. It or Not, mm -hmm. and one of them was, oh, 
Uh, this is going to be not funny. In Colorado, there is a cow with two udders, one on her back. That was one of my songs. Mm -hmm. Then, Mr. Marimoto can swallow his nose, swallow his nose, swallow his nose. <laughs> Mr. Marimoto can swallow his nose. Fish get seasick. <laughs> Mr. Marimoto. Mr. Marimoto. Mr. Marimoto. Yeah, he's a swallow his nose. Mm -hmm. And then um, clams have teeth and frequently take long walks. <laughs> I knew. I knew they walked on the Japanese cherry trees bear no fruit. Bear. No fruit. <laughs> I'm did, sorry I brought it up. Did you ever um, see this guy swallow his nose? It well, was in Ripley's Believe It or Not, so I think it's true, Dave. We have a little uh, quiz all about uh, the life of Terry Gar. We've prepared for our uh, home viewers tonight. Oh. You can play along. You might be able to do a couple for us. What do you mean? We have a little quiz here featuring you. Paul, music for the Terry Gar quiz? No, no, that, that's, that's Mr. Marimoto can swallow his nose. <laughs> that was a hullabaloo, a little bit of the hullabaloo theme. Part Question of number one. one. What from the, do with me? Weren't you on hullabaloo? No. Shindig. No, yes. Question number one on the Terry Gar quiz. <clears throat> During late nights, Terry Gar week. You know, one night, one week, we had an entire week of shows featuring mm -hmm. Terry Gar. Oh, interesting. During, during late nights, Terry Gar week, many of our viewers enjoyed A, Terry's nimble wit, B, Terry's lively showbiz anecdotes, C, the CBS late movie. <laughs> It's a joke. Do you make fun of all your guests? No, we I just like keep coming back after you for more. It's my not, own fault, isn't it? We're not we're not making fun here. It's a, just a little quiz. Should we go on or not? Highly amusing. Should we should we go yeah. on or not? Go on, yes, go on. Are you are you really steamed? Not at all. All right. Question number two. When Terry is asked for her auto maybe we better skip two. Wait a minute, let me see it. Let me just see it how oh, funny no. it is. <laughs> All right, you, you, why don't you do this one? You conduct your own little... See, th now you're a part of it. You just do one. <laughs> Number two. When Terry is asked for her autograph, she usually replies, Why, yes, I'd be happy to. It's A, B... Who should I, who make, should I make this out to? <laughs> and sorry, I'm not Joe Beth Williams. <laughs> funny. Not even funny. See, it's not. They're, not. they're not all funny. It's just more a test of our knowledge. They're, they don't have to be funny. Number three, most people see Terry Gar's movies, A, to enjoy her vivacious screen presence. That's why I go, by the way. B, to applaud her natural comic sense. C, to kill a couple hours on the plane. <laughs> well, maybe, we, maybe, maybe we better not continue the Terry Gar quiz. What do, you do you pay somebody to write this stuff? Well, I'm not, not me personally, but... Uh, here we go. Number four. Match the movie with Terry Gar's role. Oh, God. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Mr. Mom. And the roles. Neurotic but loving housewife. Anxious but devoted spouse. Distressed but supportive homemaker. <laughs> There's no vixen goddess in there? <laughs> no, there no vixen goddess. Goddess of erotica? Uh, here we go, number five. One minute. I know we got to get right through this because we got a lot of show and I've wasted a lot of time tonight. I'm sorry. A, one from... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dave. All right, quick. The one movie Terry would like to forget is A, one from the heart, B, the sting two, C, perfect. And the answer is perfect. She wasn't in it, she'd still like to forget it. We'd <laughs> all like true. to forget that yeah. one. Uh, number six, if Terry Gar were shrunk down to microscopic size, she would most likely be A, devoured by paramecium, B, ingested by planarium, C, co-starring with a tiny Charles Grodin. I don't even know what that means. I don't either. Uh, by the same token, if Terry grew to a height of 500 feet, she would A, be unable to support her own mass, B, be unable to consume sufficient calories to sustain life, C, still be described as ditzy. That's, that's an affectionate way to describe you. Like for blungent. For, for blungent? <laughs> no, I've never heard for blungent. Oh, we gotta go. Okay. We gotta go. Sorry. Now let me do one, one, one. Let's just do this last one here and then, then you can leave. Or not leave if you don't want to. 
Uh, number nine, A, on tomorrow's All-Star Game, even a relatively unsophisticated fan, baseball fan like Terry Gar can appreciate the drama of A, Roger Clemens throwing a strikeout, B, Mike Schmidt hitting a home run, C, Dave Winfield adjusting his cup. Okay, we, uh, well, we'll be right back, don't worry. Welcome back. Uh, our next guest tonight is a native of Philadelphia, and it's a pleasure to welcome him to the program for the first time. Right, Terry? Yes, Dave. He can be seen in person tomorrow evening at the Comedy Store in the Dunes Hotel in Lost Wages. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, please say, say hello to a very funny young man, Mr. Dom Herrera. Dom? Here, nice job. Thank you. Now, you actually came in on the same flight last night. Yeah, we came in on the same flight. Not a good flight, I understand. Terrifying. Yeah. Terrifying. I mean, it's interesting how it humbles people. It's like, hey, babe, they're slicking it. All of a sudden, oh, God, please, we get down, I'll be good. You know, <laughs> plane lands, they're cocky again. God is merely a concept. I mean, I'm an existentialist. <laughs> <laughs> and it, what does this shirt say? Is Marquito, this a keto? It's a Japanese baseball team. That's a great team. looking shirt. Yeah, that's why I wore it, Dave. I, it worked for you. Thank you very much. That's, it, where did you get that? Is that an actual team over there? Yeah, it's, I, I got it in Hawaii, but yeah. it's a Japanese team. And you're a big sports fan, obviously? I love sports. Yeah. I'm a, uh, one of those people, ESPN, 5 o'clock in the morning, I'm watching Persian women toe wrestling. <laughs> Skate on her face! Come on! <laughs> Watch anything. It's kind of pathetic. Have you watched the Goodwill games? Uh, I'm not sure. I, oh, I saw, a, I saw a little moto ball. Yeah, well, that's important. I, yeah. think we, I think we should all share that. You want to talk about those guys? I got some cards, some yeah. moto ball cards. <laughs> want to trade? I got some, too. Yeah, I would like to. I, was, I would like to trade some moto ball players. It's a hard sport, you know? <laughs> Terry. I just not talk no, no, you can say anything you want. I mean, it's, uh, sure. Does it that bother you if she says something? Sitting here, but no, I'm glad you're here, Terry, but don't ever do that to me again. That hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding you. I'm kidding you. Stop. <laughs> He's you know joking. It's I, just I, a I joke. A comedian. Yeah, well, it's just a joke. It's Relax. Just a joke. A little one. <laughs> <Yeah, that's it. laughs> all right, all right. And you're going to be, let's see here, Dom, you're going to be at the, uh, oh, the comedy store, the Dunes Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, that begins tomorrow, right? Yeah. So yeah. that means you're flying right out of here. Um, yeah, I'm tired. I, I'm really looking forward to it, Toby, because making those people out there laugh, Dave, that's what yeah. I love, because I love them, each and every one of those cats. Oh, good for you. <laughs> good for you. I think you know what I mean. I do know what you mean. <laughs> All right, well, uh, what do we do? We'll be back, uh, folks. We'll come back. <laughs> We're out of time. I want to thank everybody who was here tonight. Terry, so much. Thank you very much for being here. And Dom, thank, thank you for you. being here. And uh, Dan Pastorini, who was also going to join us. I'm sorry we had a little too much fun and ran out of time. Mr. Pastorini will be uh, rescheduled uh, as soon as possible, and we'll get him on just as quickly as we possibly can. Tomorrow, George Carlin and Bill Zanker. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you then. Thank you very much. Good night.
Tomorrow morning on Today, a preview of baseball's all-star game. Plus, Mary Tyler Moore and Bess Armstrong. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's right. We're back from a commercial. Oh, yes. Here is Dave, and we couldn't be happier about that. Uh, this is a big month for my uh, first guest tonight. Beginning this Sunday night, she will be seen as one of the stars of the miniseries Fresno. Have you heard about this, Paul? I heard all about this it, This is yeah. a big deal. This, this is like five, six nights on another network. And I it's, know, it's uh, huge. Yeah, it's huge, huge comedy program. Uh, then on uh, November 28th, she will be featured on our very own primetime second annual holiday film festival. Ladies and gentlemen, please say hello to the always lovely, the always talented, Terry Garr. The audience loves you. Time in and time out, you show up on this program and the audience crazy, jumping to their feet with adulation. That must make you feel, feel pretty good as an actress, as a performer. <laughs> Thanks for being here tonight. I, I, know, I know you're not feeling well. I know you're superstitious. Today is the 13th, and so right, right there... You, you're to be commended for being a trooper. Well, thank you. Yeah. I, I do have a cold. You have a cold. As Paul pointed out the other day, I'm not only a trooper, I'm a oh, show business warrior. It's a show business warrior, yeah. yeah. We you, all are. You should take no. pride in that, don't you I think do, so? I do, I do. Because you come from a show business family. Yes, I do. It's a heritage. Mm -hmm. yeah, a proud heritage. <laughs> yes, it is, Dave. Like and the Marines. Yes, <laughs> How do you doing? It's sort of festive to have this around, isn't it? I got one more. I could detonate that one. No, no. <laughs> Uh, tell me, tell me about Fresno. What? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Tell me about Fresno. It's you. It's Alan. I just thought uh, I'd throw you off for a minute. You're so stuck with those notes and everything and your questions. I don't know. What is it? It's a city or something. Isn't don't it? start with stuck with the notes, because we know what happens when we depart from the notes, don't we? Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> The death of a thousand yes. dogs. Do, do the words dead air ring a bell? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, we've lost the signal. <laughs> Must now, be a blackout. Now, what about my superstitions? Did you... Did I'm you sorry. Sure, no, no, we'd love to hear about your superstitions. Well, they're not my superstitions. These are real true superstitions. Well, <laughs> now, are superstitions true? Um, yes, if people believe in them, then I guess they're true. Yeah, I mean, they exist as superstitions, but not as points of reality. Well, unless they're work. Like, there's certain things that you do that work. If you put your underpants on backwards on a certain day, it'll be an early harvest. I, I, mean, I guess it depends on what the crop is, doesn't it? But... What, the what? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I kind of enjoyed that. Uh... All right, let's get to some more of these uh, superstitions. Okay, I wish I could remember them now. Now would be the time, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, later at dinner. <laughs> oh, I know, okay, listen. But these are for Thursday, Thursday the 13th, which is a little-known superstitious day, because usually it's Friday the 13th Friday and everyone's nervous and yeah. stuff. Well, like, for example, um, it's very bad luck to force a king to get on a tractor. On Thursday, the 13th. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Big laugh. I knew this would happen. This is what happens when I come with jokes. I should just not ever try to do jokes and just get, uh, show up and, and laugh at you. That's what you like, isn't it? No, no, no. <laughs> see, what you, you, if a joke doesn't work, don't call attention to it, and then oh, people won't oh, know if it was a joke or not, and then you just No, no, no. If I started <clears throat> thinking like that, then I'd become a, a professional, and I don't want to be. No, you are a professional. No, I'm yeah. not. I'm an anti-professional. Are you an anti-professional? <laughs> uh, okay. Wait a minute. Is the word unprofessional? As in terms of being... Amateur. Oh. Oh, I see. Thank you for pointing no, that out. No, that's not what I Touch me. Um, Let's, uh, you want to move on to Fresno, or are we still in the category of superstitions for 50, Art? <laughs> Famous, uh, what do you want to do? You tell me, it's your night. Uh, okay, I guess we'll move on to Fresno. All right, now this is a blockbuster, isn't it? CBS put a lot of money into this thing. Who, who are the stars of this uh, miniseries? You, of course. Me, of course. Uh, Carol Burnett, uh, uh, Alan uh, Ar uh, Arafant. 
Huh? Isn't Alan Funt in it? No, yeah. <laughs> I think he is. Alan Funt is in it. Art Link Letter. Uh, Charles Grodin, who was here a couple of weeks ago. I bet you and Charles had fun working yes, together. Yes, we you? did. We did quite a bit of laughing. Yeah. Had it, you worked be together before this project? No. Yeah. But we knew each other personally. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell the folks what Fresno is all about. Well, I don't know. It's about. It's supposed to be takeoff on Dynasty mm -hmm. and Dallas. It's a and spoof, all those shows isn't it? It's a watch. send up. Yes. Oh, that I watch, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you watch, right, Dave? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. Uh-huh. And, uh, then, and it's about uh, the raisin dynasties. And, Takes and place in Fresno, the, the center of the raisin uh, industry yes. in North America. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you play whom? I play, my character's name is Talon Kensington. Talon uh, meaning fingernail. Mm -hmm, yeah. And I play this love-starved vixen that throws myself at all the people. And, yeah. I don't know. Is it, is it funny? Is the show funny? Amazing? Not at all. <laughs> it's very serious. See, it's supposed to be funny, but as we know, if we say, now this will be funny, yeah. the first thing you do is go, well, I'll, I'll see about that. So I'm not going to say it's funny. Well, it's, it's unlikely it that people would watch a miniseries that was a serious drama about raisins. Is it? So, I think they'd watch it. If they watch it about other stuff, they'd watch it about that. Well, if they knew you were in it, by gosh, they'd watch it. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, you know how to flatter me, don't uh, So do we, have, we want to take a look at the clip of this? Should I set this clip up? Well, I'm, let's see if we're even going to look at it. Oh, do a commercial, and then we'll come back, Terry. Hegar herself. We'll be right back here after this to take a look at the... guy. Put him back up there. Who is this? What is he doing? Hey, get out of there. Quit screwing around. We're doing a show. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh -oh. Investigation underway. Uh, so, Terry, now we're going to take a look at here a couple of minutes from Fresno. Is it a couple of minutes? Probably about a minute. You ought to bring Joseph Heller out. He's really going to be much better than I am. You're fine. Now no, stop I'm, that. I'm serious. I'm, I'm more interested in him myself. Well, he'll but, be all right, let's see this, and then, then and that'll be over. Well, tell them what it is. Uh, what? I don't know what it is. What is this? It's a part of your miniseries. That and, uh, CBS spent like $8 million oh, on great. that's all it is. So I better know what it is. Yeah, right? because they're struggling in, in number two position. It's, I don't know. It, this must be the clip where I go out to the, the ranch house and I take my blouse off to get their attention. Well. <laughs> All right, from the, TV. Don't forget the, the, TV, the upcoming so. miniseries uh, Fresno, uh, starring Terry Garr and, and many others. So let's take Carol a look at this Barnett. clip. Carol Barnett. <laughs> Carol Yeah. Well, that was funny. There you go. Uh, well, that looks pretty good. It does? Yeah, don't you think? Well, I'm so surprised. Why? <laughs> no, because I'm not surprised. I expected it to be damn good. <laughs> and it's kind of interesting. Yeah, now you, uh, you're, you're in this, the, this uh, the film thing we're doing. You came in and you, yeah, you had a big dinner party, but, but you, just, you decided you'd rather come in and do this little video with uh, Paul and the band for our film show. Well, as you know, it was an easy decision for me. Mm -hmm. Either the dinner party or the movie. Mm -hmm. And I just went, no question in my mind, That's right. I'm doing this little movie. Well, you know, the, the part was written especially for you, and you were our first choice, so we really appreciate you, <laughs> you coming in to, to do that for us. But just one more thing before I go. Yeah. You should know that I really hate your guts now. No. <laughs> because that's this big fat lie, isn't it? No, it's not. It wasn't written. Are you, it was somebody else dropped out, so you begged me to do it. Nobody else dropped out, Terry. You liar. You know, you know what it is like, Terry? It's like taking a long car trip on a freeway, and, and sometimes we need to pull over to the side of the road and maybe get a little rest. No, no, we're, we're excited that you're in it, and, and we think that uh, the, we couldn't have really done it without you. And it'll be uh, coming up, I don't know, Thanksgiving or something. And I understand it's very funny. People who looked at the film say it's great. I hope it's funny. Oh, yeah, it's but funny. Mr. Paul Schaefer and I. Yeah, Paul Schaefer and the band, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Couldn't turn the gig down, could you? Yeah, and, uh, and as a bonus, we're getting married. That's right, in, in actuality. <laughs> Is that right? You guys yeah, we decided that. Yeah, I didn't think you were going to tell anybody like that. <laughs> all right, all right, Terry, uh, your time is up. Okay. We'd, uh, 
We'd like to see you in about six months for just a cleaning, but you have no cavities. <laughs> I won't laugh. I it's know. only a joke. Now stop that. Stop that. Be nice to me. Just be nice to me. Say please. Please. Okay. All right. Nice to see you again. Have a good week. Oh, I know. We're out of there. Carry go. We'll be right back. All right, now we would uh, want to welcome a, a wonderful actress and a fine comedian and our beloved and popular late night band leader. That would be, respectively, Terry Garr and Paul Schaefer. Kids, come on out here. I'd like to get a can of Windex and go to work. Um, I don't know what you mean. Welcome, welcome to the show, folks. Now, you guys, Paul and Terry, you made a, uh, made a little video for us, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a story of relationships. Yes, it's it called, is. It's called Stop, You Kill Me. Uh-huh. What's it about, uh, specifically? I think Paul should tell. All right, Paul. Well, first of all, I want to get one thing straight. This is not the same kind of video that you see on the cable, all music stations, where we, we you got Duran Duran. Those people... They treat women like objects. Uh -huh. This video is a sensitive video made by sensitive guys about real, real relationships, mm -hmm. about, about important topics. That's not That's true. It's not true at all. No. <laughs> it is true. It's called I, Stop You Kill Me, and it means essentially... It means the imbalance, the yin, the yang, the, the push, the shove of relationships between men and women. And in order to get this quality, we filmed the whole thing, the entire thing was filmed on a boat. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, we had makeup boats <laughs> no, come by and body makeup boats come so. by. And we would get so. off and no. I don't think so. I don't let's, remember that let's, uh, let's take a look at the video. The uh, song, the original song written by Paul and the band. Written by me, Sid McGinnis, right. Will Lee, and Anton Fig oh. all together. We wrote a little thing called okay. You Kill Me. It's, uh, it's our music video for tonight's program, You Kill Me, Paul, the band, Terry Garth. Thanks. No matter what 
you say or what you do. You know it's true. After all, it's still just you and me. Been around the world, nothing left to see. But verdicts in, deep in the tide. I find you guilty. Paul, we're all done. We're out of time. Say? Paul Schaefer and Terry Gar and the band. No, you can't. We'll be right back with Chris Elliott. I'm sorry. Talk to him. <laughs>